Hi guys, this is Garnet and today I'm going to be showing you how I speed up my drawing process by following some tips and tricks. Sometimes making a living as an artist can be tough. If you have ever tried a platform like Fiverr, then you know people are expecting quality work for less money. Due to a huge demand for art, tons of artists are making prices competitive, pressuring you to drop your prices for the chance that you will get another order. But the problem is that if you spend too much time on one art piece, then you are losing out. After all, time is money. So today, I'm going to be showing you the tricks I use to speed up the process and still make quality art. As you can see, I already have a rough sketch prepared. I have already sent this rough sketch to my customer. In the case that my customer wants something changed, then I can do that from the beginning. When the piece is already colored in, it might become more complicated to change, let's say, a pose or clothing. So I like to get this problem solved right from the beginning. I sent this rough sketch to my customer already and she approved it. So I'm going to start coloring it in. Now, oftentimes artists like to use a brush and start filling in certain sections like the skin. Like you can see right now how I'm doing it. But this can actually take quite a long time. So what I'd like to do is use the lasso tool to trace over the shapes that I have already drawn and that way I can get these things done a lot quicker. As you can see now, I am tracing over the pants, which I have placed on another layer. When working with jobs, I like to make sure I organize my layers very carefully. Organizing my layers can save a lot of time. In the case that the customer might not like the color of the pants, if it's on a separate layer from the skin, then it would be a lot easier to change the color. But let's say the pants were on the same layer that the skin is. If I wanted to change the color of the pants, then the skin will change too. There are ways that you can separate the layers once you've already done this. But to save a lot of time from doing these things later on, I do it from the beginning. As you can see in this video, I'm working with a simple composition of a character standing. If you take a look at the right, you will see the way that I have organized my layers, starting with the back of the hair, the hair that's behind the body, then I have put together the skin. On top of the skin, I have placed the hair, the hair that's in front of the body, such as the fringe. I have made sure to also place on top of the skin, the pants, any type of clothing such as pants or shirt. And then I like to separate certain sections like in this scenario, the hand is going to be on top of the, the shirt. So what I'm going to do is actually put the hand separated from the skin. That way later when I draw the shirt, I can put it in between the body being underneath, the shirt being in the middle, and the hand being on top of those layers. Keep watching this video so you can watch some of the other things that I do to make this process a lot faster. If you take a look at the bottom right, you'll see that there is a gray box with different keys being pressed. This little window will show you what keys I am pressing while I'm working. Now that I've got an idea of where I want my layers to be, I can lock them. I can start coloring them in without going outside the lines. I always like to separate my eyes from my skin. As you can see now, I have created a layer for the eyes themselves. I often do this because I often get customers asking for different eye colors. So I always like to separate the eyes. Then things like the iris and the other details that go into making the eye can be clipped down onto the eye whites layer. And then to top it off, I always like to add the eyelashes unclipped over the eyes. When working with artwork, I find that one tool I often use is the mesh tool. If I feel like the shape is not correct, I often use the mesh tool to fix certain shapes. As you can see, I'm working with the face more, adding more and more detail. If you want to learn some of the tips and tricks that I use all the time, I suggest you watch this video to see some of the things I use to solve some of my problems when I'm making this character. 
Later on in the video, you will see that I use 3D models to pose hands for my care for these characters. Now, if you take a look at my other art, you will see that I'm fully capable of drawing hands. But sometimes when you're working with other people and you want to make the art process a lot faster, I use certain resources at my disposal to make this whole work a lot faster and smoother. Oftentimes, I get people contacting me to do orders for them, but not for a lot of money. So I have to find ways to make this work a lot faster and smoother for me. So when I'm working with customers, especially with projects that are rushed and underpaying, I like to use resources such as the 3D models that Clip Studio Paint have to trace certain things, such as hands. You can also use this tool to your benefit to speed up your process, especially when drawing certain things like comic books, which can be quite tedious and you have to draw body shapes over and over again. In the video, I'm going to be showing you how I use, how you can use Clip Studio Paint's model. I do have other resources in my disposal though. I always like to use Das Studio 3D for posing my references and my models. So you will see later on in the video how I use one of my models in Das Studio 3D to pose them so I could trace over the hands. Das Studio 3D is a great resource for artists who are wanting to perfect how to draw the body. But not everybody's computers can handle the power of rendering in Das Studio 3D. That's why I'm providing my Patreons with 3D rendered poses. That's why I'm providing my Patreons with 3D rendered poses every term. My Patreons can use those 3D rendered poses for their disposal. Whether they want to use it for their comic books, whether they want to use that as inspiration, or use it as reference art for their pictures. Using 3D rendered images has really helped me to has really helped me to understand the shape of the body and what the body looks like from different angles which as you might already know is very difficult without having a model so if you're keen to become part of my community at patreon come and join me at patreon.com slash garnetflame where you can get lots of 3d rendered images every term and much more thank you so much for watching this video continue watching if you want to see how i finish this product for now garnet out